of the body part is an axial projection. Okay, so here, so when we're looking at the skull, okay, the length of the skull, we're talking about the long axis, so, so the long axis would be from here to here, not this way, okay? So an axial projection is where it matches the length of the long axis of the body part. Okay, so it matches the length of the body part. And it has to be 10 degrees, uh, it has to be 10 degrees or greater. So it's not exactly perpendicular, there's gonna be a slight angulation to that, to that extra tube. We'll talk about that later on. I'll give you guys examples, okay? It's not parallel. It's right, it's just slightly, yeah, slightly off kilter. Okay. And then the direction some new words here to you now, right? Okay, so now we're not talking about a, the x-ray angle neither being perpendicular or horizontal. We're talking about angulations in between this and this, okay? So we need to determine which way is the x-ray beam being directed. So two keys of points, either pointing towards the top of your body or towards the bottom of your body. So if it's going towards the top, that's known as the cephalic or a cephalid angle. Cephalic or cephalid angle. Now, this is pointing towards the feet, right? So the angulation is caudal or cauded angle. So towards the head is cephalic, or cephalid, or cephalid, okay? And towards the feet is caudal, or caudad. Okay, any questions? We'll get back to semi-axial here in just a moment um, because right now I, I, the axial, I don't want to spend too much time in here because the axial itself is hard to understand. I will explain semi-axial later on, okay? All right, any questions here? All right. So we talked about medial, lateral, lateral, medial, plantar dorsal, bottom, top, so on and so forth, okay? So we also have projections that enter the top and exit the bottom. Okay, so if you're entering the top, it's superior. Exiting the bottom, it's inferior. So this is considered a sup uh, su supero inferior projection. Entering the top, exiting the bottom. This is a prime example of the, the, the nasal bones. Okay, so if you were entering the bottom and exiting the top, what is that now called? Inferior, inferior, superior. Superior. Inferior, inferior superior projection. Okay, good. Inferior superior projection, like so. Okay. Any questions here? So we're going from the bottom, exiting the top. Inferior superior. It's an axial because it's not going straight parallel with the length of the body. It has a slight angle to the length of the body. That's just why it's called axial. I know, just <laughs> look at it soon. Okay, this again, this is just an introduction. All right, tangential is skimming of the body part. Skimming of the body part. So here's an example of a skimming of the cheekbone or the zygomatic arch. Here's an example of the skimming of the calvarian, bony calvarian to visualize a certain fracture of the skull. And then we also have a tangential projection of the patella. These are some crazy positions, right? Again, you thought you just put the patient on the table and you just hit that button? There's actually thinking involved, guys. You actually have to use your, your head. 
All right. So here's an example of a, an oblique infra superior, because we're going from bottom to top, infra superior projection, tangential, because it's skimming the cheekbone. Okay. Why is it oblique? What are we talking about, about oblique? Turn in. This head is slightly oblique to the side. So it's an oblique position, infra superior projection. If I want to be more specific, I'm skimming the body part, so it's a tangential projection. So again, some of these terms that we use don't apply to all body parts. They only apply to certain body parts. Which, again, I will reinforce as we go through the program. Yes. Why is that oblique? Because this head is not straight up. It's actually turned a little bit. Uh, yeah. It's not straight up and down. Yeah, yeah. See how his nose kind of turned to the side? Or, yeah. Okay, more tangential. We, we do, uh, these are called the sunrise or skyline views to isolate the patella away from the rest of the bones. We can't, when we're looking at the patella, we can't do a straight shot of it because the patella sits on top of what? On top of the femur. So when you're doing a straight AP of the patella, you're not going to see it very well because of the distal part of the femur. So we do these skimming type of projections to isolate the patella from the rest of the bones. Okay, you know why it's called sunrise, right? Isn't it like sunrise? Off the mountain top? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that one, the right or the left one? They both do the same thing. I know why. Bigger space. Is the left one like out of place? This one right here? Yeah. Yeah, this one's out of place. It should be right here in the middle. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. That's that's actually a good observation. I mean, it should be somewhere right here in the middle, but it's off to the side. So there might be some kind of pathology or condition going on with that. Okay. But here's the other thing. If you had, if you knew somebody with a known patellar injury, would you have them bend their leg like that? Probably not. So there's probably some kind of condition going on, but it's nothing too major, because if it was major, and you have them bend the leg like that, it would actually cause separation of the, uh, the patellar bone. And this is why we communicate with our patients. We try to find out what it is that they can and cannot do, and not force them to doing something they can't do. Because now you can exacerbate the condition and make it worse. I've had, I've had people who have forced a particular position on the patient and actually cause more trauma or additional fractures. Okay, what is this? AP? It is AP projection. It's not a blink. Okay, so he's kind of leaning back. Okay, so his hip is forward and he's actually leaning back towards the, the image receptor. Now the axial, remember the axial mm -hmm. is uh, a change of angle of, of 10 or greater than, than compared to the long axis of the human anatomy, right? This also applies to leaving the central ray alone, but now my central ray is not axial, it's my patient who is axial. So this is known as an AP axial projection of the chest, but this particular position here is known as the lordotic <coughs> position. Hey okay, guys, don't take notes. Again, this is, I'm just showing you, okay? So this, this is later on. I'm just introducing you to different terms. So I want you guys getting used to hearing these terms, okay? Okay, AP axial projection, more dotted position. Okay? Now the whole purpose of this more dotted uh, position is, okay, when we're looking at the left, this is what a normal chest x-ray looks like, okay? What I want you to pay attention here to is the orientation of the clavicle as well as the ribs. Okay, on the left this is true orientation. The clavicles point downwards generally. Okay, and um, you will also notice here that the ribs goes down in an angular projection. Now the whole purpose of an axial is to throw the clavicles up. See, notice where the clavicles are now? They're no longer in the middle of the sternum. They are up here. Your clavicle here is at the level of T3, thoracic spine three. So a normal AP projection of the chest, or PA projection of the chest, the uh, sternoclavicular end is at the level of T3. 
Now notice where they are up there. Where are they? Where's the clavicles? Like this, They're sir. way up there now, right? And you also notice that the orientation of the ribs are more straight or horizontal than they are pointing down in this particular image. So the whole purpose of this lordotic position, axial projection of the chest, is we want to throw the clavicles up out of the way to assess the upper portions of the lungs. This particular projection is good for identifying tuberculosis. Where they like to hang out here at the apex, apices of the lungs. So it throws the clavicle out of the way. I want to get them out of the way so I can better see the apices of the lungs. Okay. And you'll understand why we do certain, why we have different nuances and positionings. Um, again, we're three-dimensional. We try to get the patient in a position, angle our tube in a certain way to better visualize those structures. Okay? All right. In this projection, what position are they in? Upright. Okay, they're upright. Okay, what else? Right, right lateral. lateral. Okay. You're not going to get an answer to this because I haven't talked about it yet. Okay? <laughs> this projection is known as transthoracic. Transthoracic projection because we are trying to get a projection through the thorax of this patient here. Now, in this particular projection, are we looking at lungs? Because look, what's, what's, in, what's in the view of the image receptor? It's sitting where? sitting on the image receptor. So we did do this particular projection when we're trying to rule out a fracture of the right humerus. So we're looking at the humerus through the, through the lungs. Okay, because when we're taking x-rays, we do it two views. We do it this way and this way. If there's a fracture, are they going to be able to move your arms for you? And if there's a fracture, are you going to be able to you can't do this because now you're going to cause more problem or more injury. So instead of moving the arm, we're going to shoot right through the chest to assess the, the upper humerus. So this is known as a transthoracic projection. Okay? And these are just some other names. Uh, AP projection or dorsal plunger. We talked about that earlier. Okay? Okay. Parietal canthial. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to we'll talk about this later on when we do the skull. Okay. We already talked about the difference between medial and lateral, right? Yes? Okay. Let's talk about proximal and distal. Proximal, because we'll say sometimes we'll say the injury is distal to the shoulder. The injury or the pain is proximal to the clavicle. Okay? Proximal and distal tells us the location of the injury. Is it closer to or away from the point of origin? Okay. So when we're saying proximal, we're talking about closest or towards the point of attachment. Okay. So if we're looking at the, uh, the, the humerus, the elbow is distal to the shoulder. My elbow I'm sorry, the, my elbow, yeah, it's distal to my shoulder, and then my elbow is proximal from my wrist. Okay, because this is the point of attachment. It's where the limbs attach to the center of the body, the central axis. And again, we'll talk about this more later on. Okay, we talked about caudal encephalic angles. Any questions there? Okay, uh, relationship terms. Um, these are all medical terms that you guys should be familiar with, right? Intra meaning inside, inter between, and exo means outside. Yes? Okay, interior versus exterior. Superficial versus deep. Do you know the difference? Okay. Uh, different types of cover uh, curvatures, um, kyphosis, kyphosis and extreme curvature. So naturally our backs have a kyphotic and lordotic curve, right? So kyphotic is your hump in your back and the convex and, uh, portion of your back has a lordotic curve. Any excess on those curves is either kyphosis 
or lordosis. And then we also have a natural S-curve from side to side. Okay, any extreme turns on that lateral curve is known as uh, scoliosis. Okay, flexion towards extension away. Flexion towards extension away, right? Flexion extension. Uh, again, excessive extension versus excessive flexion. Uh, okay, so I'm just, you guys just gonna go through this. Okay, what, what time are we out of here? Mm -hmm. Now? 15 minutes. How, how long? 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes, okay. So um, I'm gonna have you guys look on this on your own, okay? We'll talk about ulnar and radial deviation when we talk about the wrist. Uh, we'll talk about dorsiflexion and plantar flexion when we're talking about the feet. Okay, same thing here, eversion, inversion. These are terms that I'm gonna be going through more, uh, more specifically when we cover this particular um, body unit, okay? Um, you guys know the difference between abduction and adduction, okay, away and again towards. Supination, okay? Phonation, palm down, supination up, okay? You know, you know how to remember supination, right? Give me some supper. Soup. Yeah, soup. Give me some soup in my supper. Okay. Okay, protraction versus retraction. Elevation versus depression. These are all common terminologies. So these are stuff that you should already know. Okay, circumduction. And it's good that there's pictures here to describe it so I don't have to. Okay, this I, want, I do want to uh, spend some time on just a little bit, okay? Um, rotation versus tilt. With a rotation, you have a central axis, okay? So you have a central axis, this is rotation. This is rotation. You have a central axis, okay? Whereas a tilt is a deviation from that central point. So here's my central point or central axis. It's a deviation. Boom, there's a break in it. Boom, there's a break in it. That is a tilt, okay? So rotation versus tilt. Rotation versus tilt. Okay. Position or projection. Okay, so what what position? Erect, upright. Upright, erect. What position? Right, lateral. Right. Left, left, lateral. Left, lateral. Okay, what about this? Projection. Is it AP or PA? AP, right? It's AP. Is there a slight angle to that central ray? Mm -hmm. So what are we going to call that? Axial. Axis. An axial projection. Yeah, so if it's not completely perpendicular or parallel, it becomes axial. Okay. Okay, uh, what's this? What's the, what's the neck? Lateral. Left lateral. Okay, that's how it's left lateral. What about that one? Right. The medial. 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 Lateral. Medial lateral projection. What's the position? Is it modified sense? Lateral? No. It's just, it's just lateral. It's just oh. lateral. Oh. So it's a right lateral knee. Is there any deviation from the central ray? Yes. Is it straight up and down? No. Or there's a slight axial. angle. So there's an axial projection to that. Yes. Okay, that's the axial. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Sorry I'm going to fly through this, but again, we'll go, th we'll go through this again as uh, we, we go through the course. Um, view. Okay. View, we're going to talk about, okay, view is the perspective of the image, okay? It's something that we don't use a lot when talking about uh, radiographic imaging, okay? Because this is going to be, it says here it's not accepted as a positioning term, it is seen from the vantage of the image receptor or other images, okay? So basically what it is, it's, an Im, it's a mirror of the actual position, <coughs> the projection, so to speak, okay? So let's say, for example, I was in this position. What projection am I in? 
What's the projection? AP. AP. Okay. The view is the the perspective of the image receptor. Okay, so it's going to be the mirror image of the of what's behind me, the image receptor. Okay, so if this is an AP projection, what do you think the view is going to be? Yeah. It's going to be a PA view. So it's just the opposite. Again, we'll talk about that later on. Okay, but just remember that view we don't use uh, quite often. But when we're talking about a view, it's a PA projection. But we're looking, at, when we're talking about view, we're talking about the perspective of the image receptor, the opposite end. So we talk about it from the pathway of the X-ray beam, but we also talk about it on the opposite of what is being viewed at the image receptor end. 